but yours was kind of two parts. Um, number one, you said, what do you pay your employees? And number two, what benefits do you offer? And I'm actually going to talk about the second part of your question. What benefits do you offer first? Um, because the most expensive and difficult thing you will do as a business owner is to find, hire, train, um, and try to keep a great team. It is honestly, it's very expensive to just in your time and that indeed budget that your LinkedIn or whatever those ads to get the people, um, just the hours and takes to train them to all of it. It is draining emotionally. It's draining financially. It's draining time. So we want to do everything we can to, once we get that person, we want to just keep them forever <laughs> or as long as it makes sense for both of us. Um, so the benefits that you offer and how you treat your people, um, really have a huge impact on the profitability of your business. I want to say that again, the benefits that you give people and how you treat them impact the profitability of your business. So, um, this can be very, um, really as, as important as how much you're paying them, because there are so many people out there, um, that are willing to take less of a salary if they just enjoy their workplace, if they feel valued, if they're um, given the perks that speak to them. So offering PTO and paid holidays is the great way to give something extra without it meaning a larger salary. Um, but thinking through flexible hours or the possibility of work from home, um, like if you have a bookkeeper, that that kind of a job can be a little bit more flexible, could be done from home. Um, and all of this doesn't have to happen overnight. Um, we didn't start out with a 401k, but now we do offer a matching 401k where the first 3% um, we match completely. And then if the employee puts in a fourth and a fifth percent, we match those two um, at half percent. So if they put in 5%, we match it at three and a half percent. Um, we found that we weren't able to offer health care at competitive rates. Uh, we just don't have enough employees to do that. And I'm going to guess that most of you are in that same um, place, but, and I spent honestly hours and hours and hours trying to make that happen. I really wanted to offer healthcare. Um, and it just was not going to make financial sense for them, uh, to participate in any program that we were going to be able to offer. So instead, what we do is we offer um, kind of a healthcare stipend um, where we can't actually um, force them to use it on healthcare, but that's, you know, so it's up to them. I think it's $175 a month that we give them. And um, that's how much we calculated they would be able to, they would need to, in order to pay for their, you know, healthcare on the open market. Um, we also do things like um, extra perks of food, right? So our kitchen is always stocked um, with stuff, you know, they can make toast or bagels for breakfast. Um, they, there's always stuff to make a sandwich for lunch. Um, we order pizza or tacos once or twice a month. So we um, try to give little things like that. So, you know, having lunch every day can be an expense um, for the employee that really starts to add up. And, you know, when we're buying sandwich meat and stuff like that, it's really not a huge deal, but it is a nice perk. And it's a way to kind of have a little bit more com com 
camaraderie uh, within our team because everybody's making lunch together. It's kind of a nice um, thing we do. But how much you pay someone um, to go back to that first part of your question, because I know a lot of you just want a number, how much do you pay a stager? Um, it's, it's really going to depend on your own market. Um, also, which which position. Um, it also is going to depend on how qualified they are. You know, do they have an interior design degree? Have they had years of experience? And I think Debbie talked last week, last call, that it's not necessarily that we go after that interior design um, employee. The person with an interior design degree isn't necessarily our um, target employee for being a stager. So, but all of those things um, come into play when you figure out how much um, to pay them. We have definitely learned the hard way that you do generally get what you pay for. Um, although that's not always the case. We have hired um, some rock stars that we have um, not had to pay very much. And then we also have, but of course, as soon as you find those rock stars, but you're out that they're rock stars, you, you know, increase their pay um, as much as you can to keep them. And then we've also hired some people that have completely oversold their abilities and we overpaid them. And as important as it is to hire well, um, it also is important to recognize when you do that and just to be honest about that mistake and let them go. Uh, we did have to let somebody go that was in that situation um, last year, and that was painful. And I will say that I I waited too long to do that. I kept thinking it would get better. Um, but ultimately I know that that person is much happier and I can see that our team is much happier just, um, saying, you know what, this isn't working and moving on. 